the next piece i wanted to take you through because this is most important from a positioning standpoint is also in fact this is the brand key i uh, you can also use a brand prism for that matter uh, there are multiple actually uh, frameworks which are there and definitely anita ma'am you would be aware of so many uh, so many i would say uh, brand uh, yeah. frameworks which are there uh, yeah. why i take this this as an example because this is this is i would say a lot of uh, big organization when unilever actually follows this and this is a little bit of holistic framework which is there and uh, and i would very say, popular also very, very popular, popular yeah. also yeah. but before i get into a little bit detail about this brand key it's important why is it important right for and and this is from my experience and uh, so as i told you i have worked in pepsico for so many years and i see seen brands doing multiple different things right why it happens is because whenever a brand manager joins an, or a new marketing person join they want to do something disruptive they want to do something different and what happens is you do you go all over the place there are times when uh, you think that it will work because it is disruptive but it is not in line with what the brand stands for so it's very important to really be consistent and have a framework which clearly defines what the brand stands for and this is a this is a framework which you can utilize and provide it to your entire organization and tell that this is what the brand stands for this is how you need to communicate for the brand and this is how it will stay consistent else you'll have multiple different communications coming in multiple so multiple brand benefits because your positioning as i told you is if you change your benefit your positioning also gets uh, compromised your position can also change so it's important that you identify and provide do a good work on developing this brand key and this is an example like so first is the roots uh, the roots is about for example you launched an xyz product with a vision to provide india with healthier alternative to existing abc right uh this is the root the second is the the people we serve right the people we serve is that it could be a smart home maker who cares you it's how sharply you can define who are the consumers that you are serving right third is what is the human truth right so how the how the home maker faces the everyday challenges that's how you define the human truth and then you come to what is my brand's point of view so uh, probably it could be becoming an enabler of joy in everyday healthy food right so it, it, this is an example you can talk about M- mtr for example right that's the fourth part the fifth part is what is the product truth itself it's about the more functional and rational thing that what it, how how is the product bringing to life and then you come to the functional benefit that it provides healthier alternative then you move to the emotional benefit you define that then you talk about the brand discriminator how is how is my brand different uh, differentiated from my competition then you talk about your brand personality it could be your, it could be modern smart experimental it, it's all dependent on what your brand stands for and then you talk about the overall essence of the brand so how is it a help happy is healthy for example is an either example what is the uh, brand's usp right so that's broadly the the entire framework and uh, and 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 we can take an example uh, for example lipton lipton and lipton is one of the brands that i was handling in 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 uh, in, in pepsico and uh, originally we were all over the praise it was not very clear what the brand stood for and we spent a lot of time in creating uh, uh, this entire brand key so that across markets across markets we were staying consistent to what the brand stands for right so the brand purpose was we encourage the world to live the tea way right and the people we serve is possibility embrace uh, embracers the product to truth was so lipton ice tea is a revitalizing product which uplifts your body and mind right the functional benefit is it's a great tasting refreshing multi sensorial it gives the tea experience the emotional benefit is that it you feel alive and bring out the best in yourself and then there's a brand personality it's the brand discriminator right so so this is how you craft your brand key and it's very important because you really deep dive into the brand what it stands for and uh, then you can disperse the communication 
according to this brand key which is there and there could be multiple examples neutralite another another brand that i was handling and here again uh, the root strength is that leader in sustainable farming control the process from seed to supplement so we take pride that all our products are from our organic farms and we know that from the farm to the supplement that the seed that goes into the eventual supplement that comes in the tablet that comes in we know all the steps which are there so uh, i'll not spend too much time into this brand key but yeah this is broadly how you sharply define your brand how you can really clearly communicate about the brand uh, and utilize this to make an effective communication so any questions we can further discuss on this and otherwise i think sushant so, uh, it will be great because this brand key and since you are taking care of neutralite it will be great if you can slightly deep dive into this because the entire brand key which you have explained with lipton or the framework which you have explained here we are talking about what is so if i were to summarize what you just shared and then maybe you can elaborate that sure. what is that your root strength is what does the brand stand for you know what does the brand stand for and then what is the competition so it again ties back to some of the w which uh, which uh, professor um, anita goel spoke about so you talk about the root strength then you talk about against whom so which is the competition then Got you it. talk about target for whom or Got for it. who who is your target audience then you talk about what so the benefits is your what and here insight is also something related to target So, so the target. This is my target audience. What is the problem which they are suffering, or what is the insight which we are addressing? Then, after you address the benefits, then you talk about the emotional benefits, which is your values and your benefits, and then you supplement it with certain reason to believe. So, for example, Ariel does very well with uh, clothes because there are certain micronutrients to it. So, so you add the reason to believe, and then finally, basis all this your emotional benefit, your your values, and your RTB. you talk about your discriminatory positioning and then finally you summarize it all absolutely very well i would summarize it by her <laughs> brief <laughs> i think uh, and it's a very logical way of actually uh, going i mean it, it's a very logical way of going to the destination that you are trying to build so uh, really i mean uh, I, i think uh, it's uh, and the root strength as, as i talk to you the competitive uh, environment if i further deep dive so it's about the vitamins and dietary supplements category uh, the competition is that it's about uh, the competition is functional beverages which are there in retail the direct selling organizations so this is the competitive environment which is there for the neutralite brand the target consumers are people who are not perfect with their nutrition yet invest in their health and want to take care of their body and people who are seeking for natural ingredients and safe products people who care about the environment and where their food comes from so that is the target that we are going after right and the insight and insight is very very important for any brand the insight over here is that eating right is very hard for me my life interests with my ability to stay he- healthy i don't want my poor dietary habits to interfere with my health so that is the key insight that is there that the, the the food that i take it's not nutritious nowadays you don't know how fresh it is how much pesticide everything which is there right so i i don't know whether the daily requirement of my nutrient whether i am able to take or not so that is the that is the angst that is the problem that i that i that i identify and that's when the benefits come come into picture the benefits are that it's simple safe effective way to improve my diet to complete my nutrition to plug the nutrition gap that i have on a daily basis and what it the benefit functional benefit it gives this it gives me peace of mind that i am doing something good for my body and the environment and then you talk about the values beliefs and personality that you are what you eat it is about nature first uh, science complements nature respect for the entire environment integrity in all things right so those are the values beliefs and personality that the brand builds and the reason to believe why will a consumer believe about us right because we've been talking about quality since 1934 right it has gu- guaranteed potency uh, purity promises there there is certified organic farms our own certified organic farms are there it's a plant based ingredient which which you use right it has phytonutrients which is very important for for health 
right it's it's organic farm ownership so these are all the reason to believe which is there and the discriminator is that to make the best supplements we make them ourselves we don't go outside we make it in our own farms we make it in our own manufacturing plant and nutrilite controls the process from seed to supplement right and the essence is that we want to better everyday lives for a better world so that's how uh, and that's and that's why the brand is very strong though you don't see too much of an advertisement of nutrilite as a brand so we have recently started okay. communicating with amitabh and multiple other brand we had farhan akhtar earlier with us but if you go to a distributor this gives them that essence that this is what the brand stands for this is what we consistently talk about and this is how you can sell the product more effectively even if it is expensive for a consumer pricing is important but what is more important is the value that you provide so a consumer why he buys an apple phone he buys it because it, the value it could be functional plus emotional benefit that they give right so similarly the price over here though we are premium it's the value it's the safety it's the emotional component that we provide that stays and that's why we are able to sell the products so that's a little bit of deep dive into the brand itself the brand too well i think you have been able to establish the brand position of nutrilite very clearly in my head for now so it's <laughs> so i am definitely going to try this so it's it's it's, <laughs> it's premium it's uh, it's quality it's natural ingredients it's care for the environment and it's complete the entire function is vertically integrated so right from seed to supplement that that line seed to supplement is going to stay with me that's great that's great to hear so uh, we'll move forward now to the other another part which is the which is again the part of brand positioning right now brand positioning uh, how do you craft brand positioning right so for that very interesting uh, i would say uh, framework that you can use is the brand positioning statement and here uh, first it's very important to define what your target consumer is right who is the brand aimed at what is his or her relationship with the product category what are the current behaviors what insights do we have right so that's the target consumer then you talk about the single minded promise that the brand offers right and this can be said in 10 words right very short clearly very single strong brand promise that your brand provides and then you have the reason to believe yes. and uh, a, a simple classical positioning statement that 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 you will see is that it is for the consumer and it could be uh, who may be a male or a female who may be worried or dissatisfied about something right so that's for that consumer you provide the brand xyz right it could be pepsi life boy amul whatever right the product category which here comes the single minded proposition that the, the 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 solution the the proposition that you have for the brand and then because is the reason to believe so this is a classical positioning statement and i can take you through a simple example of pepsi right this is the one brand that i have worked on so pepsi's positioning is for young consumers who want to live for now and be a champion for free spirited spontaneity rather than wait and overthink their mood so this is for the consumers who are basically uh irre- irreverent who want something now who want spontaneity immediate spontaneity right so those are the consumers that is the tg that brand pepsi has and brand pepsi that is the category is refreshing and stimulating drink that's about the brand itself which as i told you what is the single proposition which is there which inspires me to unlock the excitement of now so when i consume pepsi it gives me the excitement of now and the the because of it is that it is it has irresistible taste and has that electric sense right so this is how you can craft your uh, your positioning and there could be multiple examples uh, over here which you can which we can build but uh, this is broadly how you can create your positioning statement uh anything on this sarpit you want to build on this or no i think i think very well explained uh, with the example that uh, you know it is for whom it is i am again drilling the entire framework because the the audience who is going to listen to this uh this is a message uh, which is very clear for whom 
what is the rtb what is that you want to communicate that single line benefit either it's a benefit or it's an emotional benefit which you want to drive and then what is the reason to believe for that Correct. I think you have very well, Sushant, uh, build up the framework with the brand key to the statements. I think that is how it completes the loop, uh, which brings all the elements together. So, yes. All right. So I'll move forward. So positioning keys to success, it has to be aspirational, be clear and definitive, be true to your product. You need to find your niche, be consistent and don't be everything to everyone. Right. So these are some of the I would say keys keys to success, and uh, the last part, which which I will probably take you through, is how do you create a brand positioning? And here, uh, this is another framework which you can use, which is about first you look at the category, right? And the description is more about uh, what is the free space in the category which is already there. What do I take, right? Uh, then you talk about the target consumer. Uh, the target consumer, as we we spoken earlier, it, it, the earlier ones were sharper. But here you can look at age, income, geography, lifestyle, right? Then you look at competition. That what are the brands which are already there, which are the SQs which are already there, and then you talk about the features and benefits which are your key differentiator. And two examples that I'll that I'll correlate over here is one is paper vote, right? And it's one of the successful examples. The category that it was working on was fruit juices. But the free space that we, that they found out in the fruit juices category was the traditional Indian drink, right? And the target consumer for them was, it was urban Indian above the age of 20, living out of home, and they wanted something on the go, right? And the competition, there was already competition, Tropicana, Real, Maza, Fruity, multiple other brands were there. But then the differentiator for them was the age old flavors the, the 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 going back to the roots right the flavors of aam panna jaljeera jamun kokum right amras all these were going back to the roots and the communication that they build around that was all about going back to the roots right so this is how they disrupted the category by creating a positioning in the mind of the consumer which was differentiated Another example, fog, right? Uh, and 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 the advertisements that kya, uh, aajkal kya chal raha hai? fog chal raha hai, right? Very, very strong positioning, I think. And what they what they talked about was and the, the category was clearly deodorant. The free space was, yeah, it is there were deodorants which were there. There was Axe, Engage, Wildstone, all these were brands which were there, but there were no brand which was long lasting which was liquid based right so the free space that they identified that was the long lasting and the target consumers were urban indian middle and upper class trendy outdoor oriented and the competition as i've already told you these are the competition but the differentiator was long lasting deodorant no gas liquid based more value for money right so this is how you can craft your uh, uh, positioning right where is it that if I take a category, where is it that I should target? Who are the consumers I should target? What is the free space which is there? What is the competition which is existing? And how will I differentiate from the competition? Right? So, so very well put. So that's so, broadly. Yeah. So if, if, if I were to summarize one point which came out of this is that ownable space. You have time and again spoken about the ownable space. So, so identify that space which is free and then you own it. Now, my question is that in case there is no ownable space available, so then you create a brand positioning on the other aspects which uh, which uh, Professor Goel talked about, that it could be price-based strategy. It could be some kind of emotional differentiation which you want to create. Either So either as a leader, either as a market leader or one or two followers, you create niche by owning a particular space which is available. And if the space is not available, then you go by a price-based strategy or you could go by an emotional uh, connect which could be a differentiator from other brands. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, one Very just good. last aspect and, and I think then we will summarize the, the discussion is what is the, we, we understood why brand positioning, uh, what are the various nuances, what are the different types and what are the framework. 
one basic thing why is it important or why what is the significance for it as a brand positioning for a business uh sorry i missed your we we when we establish brand positioning understood it is, it is important how do we establish it what is its implication or what is the significance why is it that much critical for a business point of view from the commercial point of view yes so absolutely i think uh, what it goes back so when you talk about a brand right so one is all the kpis that you talk about which is from a brand awareness to consideration to favorability those are the brand kpis which are more from a long term perspective right what this boils down is to eventually what are the kpis that drive your from a business kpis how they get implemented right so from a business kpis perspective eventually it should lead to it should correlate to your revenue your profitability your market share for that matter so so those are those are the broad kpis that that are important which are immediate that you can ask that you can that you can ask uh, realize for a brand so if your positioning is clear and that positioning stays for a long time and then basis that if you drive your communication and then with the with that communication you also have the products which are relevant to that communication at the right price at the right position at, at the right uh, availability so you talk about the product which is there the price which is whether it is right whether the positioning which is right whether the promotion that you're driving is right or not so eventually if that works your positioning is right and then the product is also talking about it at, at the right price point and then the consumer likes the product then eventually it is about how you get the repeats and then eventually it leads to building of the revenue and the profitability the business, and market share and the business so, and and eventually i think consumer loyalty and consumer lifetime value absolutely and uh, uh you because anita you are on mute you are on mute Uh, just one point. I think very well. Sushant has said, and Harpreet was saying it. Just I will add one most important thing, which I feel that we should talking from beginning is uh, positioning gives a connect to the consumer with the brand, and then what Sushant has said to profitability over competition and all those things will go because that connect is very important. So I think that positioning bring helps to bring in very much into picture. And also, it helps to distinguish myself or my brand. in the in the so many choices we are spoiled for choices in the so many choices which are available in this cluttered world of advertisement of marketing it helps me to stand out in the space of the consumer absolutely absolutely i i uh, i also think that you know uh, thank you so much uh, you know professor anita and uh, sushant you know for a wonderful session uh, i also feel that um, uh, you know uh, having seen uh, you know everything in detail Uh, that um, uh, what the positioning is trying to accomplish may not be the sole responsibility of marketers alone because uh, you know uh, when you are trying to create an experience when you are trying to create a distinction in the mind of the customer the marketer can help capture insights information and you know can strategize uh, but i guess uh, a lot of other functions business functions uh, you know would be required to uh, build upon that you know um, and, and that's where i think the whole organization has to move in sync together uh, to be able to deliver on that experience uh, which i think uh, is extremely important and critical you know uh, a lot of places you know some of these things could just be left to marketers to decide and you know drive uh, uh, and and uh, you know uh, perhaps your example of you know what we saw at pepsi happening you know could could be one such reason that you know different functions you know may not have come together or different priorities you know would have made them keep shifting uh, the uh, the core uh, uh, promise message so uh, so that's why probably the consistency was missing right uh, so very 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 useful uh, uh, thoughts and you know solutions uh, i also believe that uh, there are certain core uh, branding levers uh, marketing you know uh, positioning levers uh, and and a brand essentially you know uh, not just helps you create awareness not just helps you acquire customers or uh you know activate uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, solutions uh, but it also helps you generate revenues uh, it helps you uh, retain your customers and it also creates a strong referral value right uh, and then i think uh, uh, you know uh, if if the positioning is strong if the if the brand uh, uh, is distinct 
then I think a lot of those uh, uh, objectives would get fulfilled more easily. Absolutely. I yeah, think I have. I sorry. Go, go ahead. Sorry. I was saying that uh, earlier it was more difficult for us to actually measure whether the positioning statement or the positioning work that we are doing, whether it's relating to results or not. But right. now with digital media coming in and our investment going so as a brand manager, as I as I was earlier, I always used to look at uh, if I'm working in a brand, how much budget am I getting? Whether it's a it's a brand where you are spending a lot of money or not. I think right. over a period of time, what has happened, I think a lot of brand managers will now say that how much is the money that I'm spending, whether that is uh, getting impactful in terms of performance marketing, that right. whether the monies that are getting that I'm spending, whether those are getting uh, getting me the business results or not. So I think the more measurability, the more digital media coming in and the spend going up, I think it's very easy to also measure whatever, uh, whatever work that you've done from a brand perspective, whether that's eventually leading to business or say or in sale, eventually sales or not. So I think that's the transition, which is, which has happened at least in my journey so far, uh, that now the brand managers want to see that whatever money that I'm spending, whether I'm getting the bank for the buck, whether it is brand KPI or even from a, a business KPI perspective. Very true. And I think to add to what Sushant, you just said, uh, for brand positioning perspective, the brand KPIs could be NPS, could be uh, your brand recall, could be your brand awareness. So for example, in Pepsi, it is all over the place. But uh, when you showed the example uh, for Lifebuoy, I think all three of us as consumers, we could bang on point out that, you know, these are the, these are the connects. So I think that brand recall, that brand awareness and NPS is where we can measure whether brand positioning is successful or not. So I think um, uh, with this, we, we are towards the end of our session. And I would really like to thank uh, Professor Goel and Sushant and Vikesh for uh, taking time out and uh, being here on this, on this episode. Thank you very much, Harpreet. I also thank you a lot to, I think, to start these series and uh, I think roping me in with Sushant. It was a wonderful working with Sushant, with you, as well as Vikesh. Thank you very much to all of you. Sure, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in for uh, part two of episode two. In this particular episode, we looked at various aspects such as what is a brand key, what is brand positioning uh, in terms of a brand prism. Uh, we looked at example of Lipton uh, explaining this brand positioning and use of brand key. How can a brand key be used as a communication tool? How to write a great brand positioning statement? We also looked at brand key of Neutralite and how insights have been used in formation of brand positioning statement for Neutralite. What do we understand by ownable space and what is the meaning of niche uh, when it comes to brand positioning? Significance of brand positioning for a business or commercial point of view and positioning in terms of establishing connect with the consumer and hence loyalty and hence more revenues. Why brand positioning is not a sole responsibility of a marketeer and why collaboration of various business functions is required to make the brand positioning stay with the consumer, whether all the money being spent is actually getting converted into a solid brand positioning and the impact on business. All these different aspects were looked at in this episode and in our discussion with Dr. Anita Goel, who is a professor of marketing at IIM Lucknow, and Sushant Dayal, who is category head nutrition at MV. In case you liked the episode part two, I will also be putting part one link into uh, the copy into the post in LinkedIn. So you can watch that. And if you like the content, please do like and share and subscribe to our channel. Stay, stay tuned with us for more interesting uh, episodes on different aspects of marketing at Marketing Demystified Going Beyond the Classroom. Thank you.